Hi guys, today's episode is brought to you by Scottish Grappling. Scottish Grappling have events throughout the year, uh, competitions throughout the year as well as SGI tournaments on as well. The uh, next event that's going to be on is SGI 6, very stacked card. Go on to the Scottish Grappling website page, our Facebook page, and you'll be able to uh, go into Eventbrite and actually purchase tickets from there. You've got obviously single tickets, group tickets and so on. Uh, you will be able to get tickets on the door, but you will not be able to take advantage of any of the promotions that they do or have on offer. That would need to be done through Eventbrite. So that's uh, Saturday the 9th of November in the usual place in Mary Hill. Um, and again, information is on the Scottish Grappling website. Uh, taking us on to the Glasgow Open. Glasgow Open will be on the 17th of November, Sunday the 17th of November, in Scotston Leisure Centre. Uh, this is a gi only event, um, and all divisions will have double eliminations, uh, so it means that uh, all fighters should get two fights. And that will be, um, as the Glasgow BJJ Open, uh, you have... Uh, entry price, normal entry price at the moment is £45 up until midnight on the 26th of October, so next Saturday at midnight, and then after that um, it then goes up to £55 due to the late entry fee, and that will be until the 10th of November, so get yourselves registered for that, cash prizes are available on the day as well, and uh, James McIntyre uh, regularly updates how much the cash prizes are um, as and when they do rise. So again, keep an eye out on the Scottish Grappling page as well as the Scottish BJJ community page. So hi guys, welcome to Stoomcast. So today I'm joined by what I would class as the king of jiu-jitsu in Scotland, um, Shay Montague. Uh, Shay, obviously the highlight being... Uh, the no gi worlds obviously going out there winning that as they becoming the first adult um, to win a worlds. I know that Rick Young had won the masters, but in regards to adult, um, I say Shay Montague was definitely the first one in Scotland. So she is training out of the grip house. Obviously started off obviously going training up with SBG, obviously the guys up north, but obviously living in Glasgow now at university, so training out of the grip house uh, and represents East Coast Jiu Jitsu, obviously competitions and things like that. So um, Shay's competition record is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, anybody that's no, that's knows Shay or heard about Shay, seen Shay, again, you guys will know what I'm talking about. As a very, very technical, still young. I mean, only 20 year old and still very, very young. So he's got an absolute fantastic career in Jiu Jitsu. Um, ahead of him, um, so we're definitely looking forward to seeing what comes from him next, so Shay, thank you very much for obviously taking the time to speak to me. That's no problem at all. How are you, how's everything going with training and stuff like that? Everything's going fantastic, but at the minute I'm doing the Nogi Euros this weekend, Right. so at the minute I've just been like training pretty hard this week, a lot of Nogi, um, mm. just to get ready for that one. Yeah, when do you travel out for that? I fly out tomorrow, so I'm going to train tomorrow morning and then I'm going to head straight to the airport, fly to like to Rome, then have like one day chilling out and probably could be on Saturday. Yeah, yeah. Um, so obviously we we expect a gold medal, she I mean, are you I'll okay? try my best, no promises, <laughs> but I'm, I'm going out to try and win for sure. Yeah, yeah, brilliant, brilliant. So you'll have a good time out there. Um, is that your first time out there? No, I've done Nogi Euros twice, so yeah. I came third at Blue Belt and then I won it at Purple Belt last year, so yeah. hopefully I can last year's success definitely i'm sure you will as i said i'm definitely sure you will i mean you're one of the guys that um as i said for being so young has done so much uh, you've done more than guys that have been doing jiu-jitsu for 15 20 years and things like that so um so yeah i'm sure you'll go out there and do um exactly what you did last year so um so for you she i mean how did it all start from you um in regards to jiu-jitsu so my route into jiu-jitsu is probably pretty stereotypical of people that live in Britain as I kind of got into watching MMA yeah. and I was like really into MMA and then I was like, ah, oh, I want to do that. Mm -hmm. But I, I was Googling like MMA gyms in my area and like all the photos are full of people with like tattoos on their face that look super <laughs> scary and stuff. And yeah. I was like, oh, I 
don't know about that. Yeah. So then I found like um, a jiu-jitsu gym, headed along there, and I quickly discovered jiu-jitsu is a lot more fun than being punched in the face. So that's kind of yeah. how I started doing jiu-jitsu. Yeah. But there's a funny story about uh, how I started. So I, the first gym I went to said um, on their website, like kids' classes ended at like 14 yeah. and adults' classes started at 16. Mm-hmm. Uh, and at the time I was 15. Yeah. So I didn't... I, I took that really literally and I was too scared to go along until I turned 16 so I got my mum to drive me down on my 16th birthday to do my first jiu-jitsu class with, like, with my passport in hand ready to prove I was 16 I went in <laughs> they didn't even ask what age I was or anything I was so disappointed I could have had like a couple extra months training yeah yeah <laughs> um, was that the what what gym was that that you started that then I started at the same gym that Kevin that started, so I started at Focus on the Ground Gold Team in Elgin, and mm-hmm. then I um, and after like six months, I moved to what was then called the Jiu Jitsu Misfits, but now it's called SPG Mori. Yeah, yeah, and you were one of the, uh, I believe, the originals, because uh, obviously Ke- again talking to Kevin, obviously about the Misfits. I mean, you were one. No, of the- so I, I wasn't one of the originals. So I they had already left Focus by when I started training at Focus. Right, okay. Um, but then there was like a night where there was no class at Focus, so, so I went along to one of their classes and yeah. their style and the fact that it probably also helps that they're a lot younger mm-hmm. and I, I was a younger person, kind of like clipped with me, so I, so I moved over there to train. Yeah, yeah. Um, and obviously, I mean, obviously from day one, I mean, you, um, I think you got right into it. How, how, how did you feel about, because again, when you talk to people about jujitsu when they first did it, when they walked in, seen the first class, guys kind of rolling about, cuddling each other effectively. So how did you feel in your first class? I mean, did that kind of put you off a little bit? or No, no, at all. So I've kind of got a bit of an obsessive personality, which probably uh, helps in the jiu-jitsu. So before I'd went, mm-hmm. I'd, like, researched everything. I'd watched, like, loads of highlights. I'd already, like, started watching, like, some jiu-jitsu matches and stuff. So I kind of went in kind of expecting what it was like uh, a lot of people come into jiu-jitsu with absolutely no clue what's going on yeah. which i always find shocking imagine going to football and not knowing you're going to kick the ball yeah. um but yeah i had a pretty decent idea of what was going on and i'd watch like some tutorials and moves and stuff so i wasn't like clueless really so it didn't yeah. shock me yeah yeah so you were used to it coming in because i'd say it does it puts people off some people they'll come in and do a class maybe do like a taster class and then you never see them again and then obviously you get guys that come in and do the class and you're with them for five six seven years or whatever so um so it's always good to see especially at 16 i mean even there because at 16 i mean you could have been doing anything else other than jujitsu i mean you could have been out enjoying yourself and things like that so ah jujitsu is enjoying yourself (laughs) it definitely is it definitely is for jujitsu guys we love it we love it we uh, we try and spend as much time as possible and stuff like that but yeah other 16 year olds um about doing other things and stuff like that so um so it's good that you managed to get in and enjoy it um now for you i mean when you were talking about the videos they are watching videos and things like that, who who was the kind of people that you watched videos on was there a specific person that you looked up to well i was i've always i still look up to them and uh the mendes brothers like uh i obviously i segued into to just watching like mma fights just highlights i was like some of Jack Array and that sort of thing going and just launching people around mm-hmm. but then like I quickly got onto like the Mendes Brothers highlights where they're just doing such fancy fluid movement it's almost like they're dancing while doing jiu-jitsu yeah. and that just like uh, my mind was blown and I love to watch that and I wanted to be like them really badly <laughs> yeah, yeah and yeah you, I mean you do brilliant I mean we mentioned obviously uh, the Nogi Worlds and things like that so obviously going over there and being the first adult in Scotland to win the Nogi Worlds um, how did that all come about for you getting to the world. Well, well, that one was, uh, I owe a lot to the guys back home and the Misfits for that, um, because um, I, we wanted to go over there and compete in the tournament, but it was obviously going to be quite expensive, so mm. they got together some money, and I'd done like, some little seminars and stuff, and they were able to raise the money and help me out enough to pay for the flights and the entry and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. It, was, so it was really handy, because that gave me the opportunity to go out there and like, put my name put my name on, on the map as much as I could. Yeah, yeah. And... What was your uh, initial feeling going out there and obviously walking into that venue for the first time? Well, I'd, I'd done Gee Worlds earlier in that year, and um, uh, so I kind of had an idea of what to expect. Um, I mean, it's just, I find we're competing, like, as soon as I start competing, the, the nerves go away. Yeah. So I was just getting to that competition. Like, the hardest 
point is probably the day before I'd say mm-hmm. the day where you're not really training you've got nothing to do other than sit there and think about the competition yeah as yeah. soon as as soon as you're in the venue you've got your headphones on you're just like hyped to be there you're excited you're excited to go compete yeah. you're excited to test yourself against some good guys you know yeah yeah definitely and what was uh for you your first competition what was the very first competition that you you did uh, the first like proper competition I done was um, a Scottish grappling one. I think it was the first annual uh, Scottish Cup of BJJ in in Ravenscraig years and years ago. Yeah. Um, and that oh my god, I was so nervous for that one. <laughs> I, could, I could hardly eat anything. I, all I all I ate was I had like a little thing of donuts and I managed to like force down a donut because it tasted sweet enough for any proper food. I just it couldn't even touch. Yeah. As <laughs> it's, it's uh, first competition, I always remember mine's. Uh, Mine was down in Liverpool. I, I don't know, I didn't feel nervous, but you know how you get that, uh, your mouth goes dry, and there's absolutely oh, yeah. nothing you can do to get the, your mouth wet, and then, but as soon as you're on the mat, that's it, it's game time, do you know what I mean? So <laughs> the nerves quickly went away, so uh, first competition was always a nerve-wracking one, and I always remember the build-up to it, because um, obviously trying to get in 100 kilo, I think it was a couple of kilos over, um, and managed to get down, dropped a couple of kilos and went out and obviously won it. So for you, I mean, in regards to your preparation, how how do you go about, obviously we know about the training and stuff like that, but in regards to anything else, how do you prep for the competitions? Uh, I, I don't do much different really um, because I, I train pretty consistently all the time. So maybe train with a bit more focus, try and like do more of the moves that I'm good at as opposed to trying to, add new moves to the arsenal um uh, i have to like maybe lose like a kilogram a kilogram and a half of rooster weight so just eat a bit cleaner but other than that my life stays pretty similar to be honest yeah yeah um and i was reading i mean i read online there was a a comp that you did and i'm trying to see the comp it was um uh, it was a west of scotland bjj open back in 2016 so three years ago and at that point i think you were only 17 at that point and um, that, I, I think this is right, you weighed 49 kilos at that time. Oh, yeah. When I, uh, my first competition, I probably weighed in at like 47, 46, something like that. And yeah. I think um, the first competition was maybe like under 60. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you had, yeah. Uh, yeah, you had uh, I believe, the no gi was under 61 and the gi division was under 64. Okay, so I think I, the competition you're talking about, is that the one in kind of like the start of the year? start of the year 2016 i think so yes yes yeah okay so that, that wasn't be uh, that was my third competition that one right. that yeah. was the competition where i think like i, I started to, to put things together uh-huh. um, I, I managed to, to win my first two competitions but i think it was just like a, abusing my flexibility and kind of ending up somewhere semi-decent whereas that competition i feel like i started to put some moves together and actually like do jiu-jitsu <laughs> yeah 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 and it's just amazing i mean 49 kilos going in there at that point 49 kilos Fighting under sixty one, no gear. Oh, I I I done the absolute in that tournament. Um, yeah. So so I, I won the first match, and then in the second match, I came up against somebody that was like uh ninety nine kg, maybe like <laughs> the super heaviest thing. Yeah. And I managed to sweep it, but I thought maybe I was gonna be able to win. Yeah. And then like I I must have I ended up back on bottom somehow, but like not being down points. I must have like half got round the scars being reversed or something. And then the guy like got me in a guillotine and like like picked me up from like oh my god and I had to clap. <laughs> man, man, I'd say go to go at that. I mean, especially being seventeen year old in that competition, I'd say the one that I'm reading about, uh seventeen year old and and uh being outweighed well that that guy ninety nine kilos, that's more than double your weight was at that point. Um <laughs> So I definitely take my hat off to you, <laughs> <laughs> so because and again I've seen you a couple of times um, uh, at competitions, obviously Scottish grappling ones, and uh, very very technical. Obviously watching you, very technical. You move about very quickly. Um, submissions are some of your submissions are fantastic to watch. Um, oh, thank you. And was that always something? I mean, when you were obviously through your training and things like that. I mean, is that you, you mentioned? Obviously, you work on your obviously your technical ability different positions moves and so on so is that something that you uh that you try and concentrate on as the uh maybe because obviously you are like you are very light so um so is that something you specifically work on your technical ability and your movements and so on oh i mean you, you've got to really um 
especially when I'm light, I've got to do it to be able to hang with people in the gym. But really, anybody, if they're super big, if they want to be able to hang with people in competition, yeah, yes, yeah. it's going to have to work on their technique and stuff. So just try and find the moves that that are going to like work the best and focus on those and focus on getting the little details down. Yeah, and and then like the speed of movement just comes from doing them a lot in rolling. And, and doing them a lot in like specific sparring and stuff yeah yeah and obviously when you obviously went to the misfits obviously you're, you're training at the misfits um obviously with kevin McAloon and so on so um and again kevin said obviously when you you guys were all together as a team or not just you guys but the team at that point was absolutely brilliant um but especially when you guys all got together um i think you mentioned there was four of you at the time and he just said when you four were together, it was absolutely brilliant. He absolutely loved every moment of it. So how was for you, again, being a smaller guy in room, how was it for you when you were at the Misfits coming through? Oh, I, I loved it. It's, it's hard sparring. And the, and the thing I enjoy the most is the hard sparring. I like I like to be tired after a round. I like I like to like then struggle to get up and go to the next round. Like That's what I really enjoy, like the, like the battle in jiu-jitsu. Mm-hmm. Um, so there was perfect for me. Like Everybody sparred hard. The, 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 there was no excuses. And then it was good crack afterwards. And the guys really looked after me. Like if I couldn't get to training, they, they'd drive me home. I left about 20 minutes away. They'd drive me home. They'd drive me to training. They, they'd give me places to stay Like if I needed to stay somewhere. So yeah. like those guys were a great help. And like the training was really good. I really enjoyed training there. And I still enjoy training there when I go home. Yeah, yeah. And how often do you get home um, to get up the road to see the guys? Uh, really only in the, the university holidays. So I get home like for a big chunk of time in summer and then a little bit of time at Christmas. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. And then obviously uh, in Glasgow at the moment, obviously getting training at the grip house. Um, I mean, we don't really need to say much about the grip house. Everybody knows uh, the kind of caliber of guys that they've got coming out of that gym. So, um, how do you how do you find the training with these guys? Oh, I like it. There's um, the thing that's different to me at the grip house than back home is the number of bodies. Mm-hmm. So there's so many more different types of people to train with and stuff. That I like that, um, and I, I just like it. There's a nice group of people there. Everyone's really friendly. It's, a laid back vibe so they kind of let you do your own thing and then help you out where they can so it's i really enjoy that bit mm-hmm. of it because mm-hmm. i find like you know like if you train in an environment that's a bit too much of a hierarchy mm-hmm. it can feel a bit weird and comes like a stifle and oppressive environment because you're expected to do the certain moves that this certain person likes instead of being able to develop your own game yeah uh, and both here back home and, and east coast as well like there's a lot of focus on uh, on, on self-development like being able to develop your own game because obviously everybody's body is so different everybody is mind is so different as well so the moves that you're gonna like click with body wise and mind wise are gonna be so different so mm-hmm. the fact that there's that focus on being able to find your own game i think really really helps you helps you progress and especially if you're intelligent and diligent enough to go out and study matches and stuff when you get home to go and think about what might work for you specifically so so i like that about all the three places yeah yeah definitely and the good the good thing about the grip i mean I say there's, there's so many guys up there that you you've got the ability to train with. So and obviously different kind of sizes, levels, and stuff like that. So um, it's a fantastic place. I mean to go and train at. I said I think I've been there a couple of times. Did a couple of open mats up there. So and obviously you know the guys through competitions and stuff like that. You always see them. So um, is it important for you to have guys of a similar weight to you, or are you just happy to roll? Um, with anybody I'll, I'll roll with absolutely anybody but I, I would prefer to have some more rooster weights but we're a rare breed in, um, <laughs> a rare breed in Scotland so um, yeah. when I get away and I get to train with some other people my size I really like to take advantage of that mm-hmm. because at, at rooster weights sort of like the meta of the game is so different than some of the other weight classes because yeah. everybody's so flexible passing the guard is so difficult so it's like the arsenal of moves you have to use yeah it's yeah. so different than what you would roll with say a middleweight where there's space to fit in by their hips when you're trying to pass yeah um so i i have to be like aware in my own head when i'm training like to focus on the moves that will actually work in my weight class as yeah. opposed to just focusing on the moves that are going to work in the gym but i'm going to come to competition and they're going to be shut down because of the body type and, and the flexibility of my opponents yeah yeah and do you get, uh, even obviously East Coast Jiu-Jitsu, do you get many rooster weights to train with down there? 
Um, there's not too many rooster weights, but there's a nice selection of like small people. Yeah. Uh, like uh, they've got Marcus Beal and Sam McNally who who both compete with featherweight, and they're absolutely phenomenal. Like they mm-hmm. completely destroy me, but I can learn so much from them. Yeah. when they're on with me because I see the ways that they're beating me mm-hmm. and then I can try and implement that on other people and then there's um, Richie who's also fair he, he's really really good and fun to roll with there's a nice collection of girls there that are small really technical yeah, so yeah. great to roll with and there's because um, obviously East Coast is uh, the main gym's an island but there's a couple of other affiliates and stuff like so Ellis' gym North yeah. East Jiu-Jitsu he's got like a, a light fair fair called a man a blue belt he's super super good so whenever whenever I get to train with him that's fantastic because he has the same kind of body type, the same sort of flexibility. So yeah. take advantage of getting to train with those guys whenever I can. Definitely, definitely. And then uh, um, obviously you do get over to, you, you mentioned there, obviously getting over to training in Ireland and things like that. So what's the level like in Ireland as it is to, let's say, Scotland? Oh, I, I mean, I, I was as light years ahead, really. Mm-hmm. Um, especially at that one particular gym, like East Coast is probably so far ahead of the other gyms in Ireland. Yeah. Um, uh, and the level like they're pumping out like international competitor after international competitor like Fion's obviously she's she's won so much just came second to ADCC won Nogi Worlds yeah. Sam's medal at Brown Belt Pans Shane Fishman's medal at Brown Belt Pans so just like the level there mm-hmm. is like really really high like it's, it's, it's for me the training there is as good as if I went anywhere else in the world mm-hmm. because they beat me super easy so even if I went to like say Atos it would just be the same they'd both just be beating me super easy so yeah. uh, the training there is brilliant yeah I mean we're going to get to see I mean Fion's going to be over here um, next weekend I believe um, so we're going to get there I think she's having doing a few seminars over here so uh, it's definitely going to be good to see so obviously the, the, the gym must be a very confident gym because you know yourself, you've probably been to, well, you've been to a number of gyms all over. Um, you've probably seen that maybe you go in and some people that you're wrong with are maybe not as confident. Um, so obviously the gym that you're training at must be a very, very, uh, a gym full of people that are just full of confidence because of um, the things that they've done in jiu-jitsu. Yeah, I mean, the environment at East Coast is super good because certain gyms you go to, when you go to America and stuff are like, so full on competition gyms that a hobbyist would be able to go there and enjoy themselves. Like I trained at uni and I loved it, mm-hmm. but I can see how if you're just a normal person wanting to do jiu-jitsu, that would be quite a difficult environment uh, to sort of train in. Whereas East Coast is a perfect level. There's hobbyists there that enjoy training, like come three, four times a week and just get to enjoy the training. There's the people that train twice a day, every day, and they they exist in like a nice harmony. Mm-hmm. So it's like probably like one of the, the perfect environments for training. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good that's good it's good that you're enjoying it i mean definitely it's because uh, it's difficult sometimes i mean you again you probably know this is finding a gym where you're comfortable um obviously you see a lot of guys uh maybe training at one gym and then they'll move from that gym to another and so on and so on so um for you is that important then to get somewhere where uh one you're comfortable with and two it's a happy environment for you i suppose but i think it's also important to go out of your comfort area and train in other gyms mm-hmm. one it's in a way reminiscent of competition two you you get given totally different styles yeah. like if you start training environment and only stay in one environment where you feel comfortable you're just going to get used to those styles you every round you're going to know where you can take the break so it's important to go out to those areas where your mind's got to be alert all the time where your body's got to be alert where you've got to problem solve new problems while you're there mm-hmm. and also i think it's important to know the level if you, if you stay just in one gym when you go to competition, it's going to be quite a nerve-wracking experience because you don't know how the other gyms stack up to you. You don't know how great people might be. Whereas if, if you travel around a lot, in, in a way, it kind of frees your brain because you get to see the level. You get to realize that you're training, it, even though it's not in America or Brazil. You, you, you've you got a good level training, and that allows you then to feel confident with, when you step on the mats. Yeah, 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 definitely. And then, um, obviously, going back to your competition stuff, I mean, you... Um, as did that one at the start, I called you the king of jiu-jitsu for obvious reasons, uh, the king of jiu-jitsu in Scotland, because as I say, you've went out there, and again, being such a young age, going out there and uh, obviously winning the, the no-gi world, so um, for you, was competition always something that you wanted to do even before you started, or was that something that um, just came about that? you maybe went to your first competition you didn't really know what was going to happen so was that always important to you to compete in jiu-jitsu 
Well, when I started, my aim was to compete in MMA. Um, so I, some form of competition was always the goal, I suppose. But um, the first jiu-jitsu competition kind of just came about. Like the the guys were all going down, like Kev, uh, Kev and Ross and Aiden, I think. All three of them had MMA fights the night before, and then the jiu-jitsu competition was on that day. Yeah. So I was going to go down to watch them fight MMA, and they all signed up to the jiu-jitsu competition, mm-hmm. despite the fact they competed MMA before mm-hmm. the day before, mm-hmm. and, and all three of them won actually. So obviously, if they were going to do the uh, jiu-jitsu competition after competing MMA the night before, like I'd have to do it too. Like it'd be silly not to. So I just like went in, and then like um, I think I think I'm lucky I won because then I was like, oh, this is great. This is it feels nice. It feels good. Mm-hmm. So then I kind of wanted to do, to do more. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then MMA, I mean, uh, did you manage to get any MMA, any MMA fights? Oh, no, no. Uh, thank God. Um, <laughs> uh, I was, uh, so I didn't, because obviously focus is just a jiu gym, so yeah. I didn't train any MMA, and I went to Misfits, and I, I would go to the MMA classes and stuff, mm-hmm. um, concurrently of my jiu-jitsu training, because they didn't clash. But then... Um, my first time going to Blue Belt Gi Worlds, um, I was doing MMA sparring like maybe a month before or something, yeah. and I had somebody mounted, and they managed to punch me from mount bottom in a way that like fractured like two two of my ribs at the back. Right. Um, right. and I, I was obviously I booked the flights for the competition and stuff, so I was, I was going to go. So I was basically just like living on painkillers. I think I think I took a week off training, yeah. and then I was like eating so many painkillers that. Like when people would be like, oh, I'm borrowing me and stuff, I could barely feel I obviously I know that my arm was about to break in tap, I could barely feel it, which is kind of like scary, but I was having to do that to be able to train because I wanted so bad to, to do well in those worlds. Mm-hmm. Um, and then at that stage, I'm like, if MMA is going to take away from Jiu Jitsu to enjoy more and potentially like injure my health like it did there, yeah. I'm just like, ah, oh, it's not for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll maybe take one MMA fight when I'm older. Yeah. <laughs> um, just to take something off the bucket list, but I, I don't see it being like any big part of my future. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. I mean, jujitsu is definitely for you. I mean, I'd say definitely done a lot so far in jujitsu, and obviously going to do a lot more as well. So, um, for you, I mean, what's uh, what's your vision for your future in regards to competing? What is it you want to? Uh, because again, we mentioned obviously you've done quite a lot in such a short period of time. So, what is the the vision for you? What's the thing, the thing or things that you want to do in the future? Well, my vision for me in jiu-jitsu is just always to ensure that I, I'm enjoying training. So, mm-hmm. as long as I keep enjoying competitions, I'll do competitions. Um, I obviously want to be able to win as much as I can, but but the most important thing for me is always just to enjoy training. I'd like to do some competitions, do as well as I can. Um, hopefully go all the way to black belt and be able to compete like at a decent level f- through all the belts um, yeah. and then one day I'd like to open the gym um, or, or coach at somebody else's gym I think I think that I'll be better at the coaching aspect than I ever will be at the competing aspect I think like yeah. that's what I'm looking forward to is being able to open the gym um, that's kind of like a nice competition gym and hopefully attracts some young people and put a lot of energy in, into making them really good yeah and do you have you done any coaching so far because i know you mentioned obviously you you've done some seminars before um so have you managed to do any coaching oh yeah when before i came to uni i coached like two two or three times a week um back at the gym back home mm-hmm. uh SPG Moray, and, and when i uh, when i go home i, I coach as much as i can mm-hmm. uh, so I, I really enjoy coaching i really especially when you find somebody that's really into jiu-jitsu and really like t- t- takes on, on board the knowledge that you're imparting on them like they imbibe what you want them to imbibe and yeah. and then they also add their own spin to it and they're enthusiastic like i really i really enjoy that connection so mm-hmm. uh, yeah i definitely like to coach more in the future how did a big guys cope, cope with uh, your coaching do you um because obviously when when like you see coaches and so on at gyms and what they'll do is they'll show a specific move but some moves sometimes especially us bigger guys uh, we can struggle sometimes with certain moves and things like that. i know i'm quite small so in regards to like triangles and stuff like that, i mean i've never been able to triangle anybody in the time that i've been doing jujitsu so do you kind of whenever you show a move as uh as maybe something else that you would show um one of the kind of bigger guys um how to adapt it to their style yeah, obviously, if, if somebody's struggling with a move and you can tell it's due to their body, I'd try and like show them some alternative or some way they can use the same principle 
to benefit them. Um, but uh, especially when you keep teaching like a, a more basic class, hopefully, hopefully the moves will be suitable suitable for everybody. Yeah, yeah. And then obviously in regards to the, the competing, any funny stories about being on the road? Anything that's happened that uh, that kind of sticks out in your mind? Um, I, I once had to choke somebody unconscious twice in one match. That was a bit amusing. <laughs> uh, it was an Empire grappling in, in Manchester, <laughs> and I had the guy in a, a triangle. And I could totally see that he was unconscious, like he totally flopped. Yeah. And but the referee was standing behind him, so I let go of the triangle. Yeah. Uh, and the referee like walked around, and by the time the referee walked around, the guy was like, you know, that semi day state when people like open their eyes and they're kind of like <laughs> trying to work out what's going on. Yeah. And the rest like. Rest like he's not unconscious, so obviously he's still kind of half in triangle position. So I just locked the triangle in again immediately, <laughs> and the guy went out so quick the second time. I don't know. It must have. I don't know why that would happen or why that would be. Be did. Yeah. And then like obviously the rep was in position to see this time he was unconscious. Oh. And then the guy woke up. He's like, I swear to God, I was like unconscious, awake and unconscious again. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> that's what happened. I'm really sorry. Oh man, that would be horrible. That would be absolutely horrible. Go out once is bad enough. Go out twice in the one match is <laughs> it would be absolutely horrible i couldn't imagine that i definitely couldn't imagine that so um... yeah i felt so bad I was like, oh, no. <laughs> you know i've never i've never seen i've obviously we've seen guys getting um going unconscious at, at various comps but to see it twice um and the poor guy what was what was the guy when you oh, did you get a chance to speak to him after it I spoke to him briefly, but we're just, it's just like, all oh, good match and stuff, like, you know, the basic formalities. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I also had, actually, uh, at my first world, um, somebody try and claim they should have won the match after I choked them unconscious. <laughs> so, um, like, it was the end of the match, and I was down, like, uh, an advantage or two advantages. But, like, I, I got the guy in, like, a guillotine, and then I could feel it was unconscious, but, but I didn't really want to let go because there's only three seconds left. So when the buzzer went, I let, I let go, and he, like, slumped, slumped to the mat, like, totally unconscious. Yeah. So, yeah. obviously, I won the match, but he was trying to claim that because he, he didn't go on, he was like, oh, I went unconscious, but, like, I went unconscious, like, a split second after the bell or something, so I should have won on the two advantages. <laughs> I was, like, having a go. I was like, well, like, how more can you lose a jiu-jitsu match than, yeah. at, like, soaring on the mat, you know? Man, that. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, there's videos of that as well. I mean, especially if you go to like the, the any IBJJF comps and things like that. I mean, they've always got videos. People watch it on Flow Grap one and stuff like that. So everybody would have seen what had happened. So, but fair play to them. I mean, yeah, you never ever want to lose. Uh, but to try, oh, yeah. to, to try and pull a win like that, then that, that's just ridiculous. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> I had one, I had one in the gym where I was rolling with somebody. I did, I didn't really, really know them, but I think they've been doing just like a wee while. Yeah. And I got them in like a, a guillotine, like a matter of guillotine, mm -hmm. and they went unconscious. So I like stood up over the top of them. Yeah. And when they woke up, they started coaching me as to how I could have finished the guillotine. <laughs> like I don't think they realised they were unconscious. Like I, I don't see how it didn't compute in the head because they were like lying flat on mount, and I was like standing up, like standing up above them. Yeah. And they're like, oh, you could have finished the guillotine like this. But I'm like. How do you reckon I got to this starting up position? Well, I used to lie down there, but I didn't even I didn't even really say anything. I was like, okay, and then we just carried on rolling. Yeah, yeah. You got to love guys like that, though. Do you know what I mean? When you catch them in submissions and then they stop, or they'll maybe stop you while you're getting the submission on, and they'll try and tell you how you can do it better. And you're like, well, do you know, oh, what? Yeah. I had it on. Do you know what I mean? I've got it on, you've just stopped me from having it on. So, and that happens everywhere you go. Everywhere oh, you boy, go. and that was a white belt and blue belt. That happened to me so often. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, for you, I mean, uh, again, you train in a lot of different places. Do you have a, uh, a favourite place? Um, a place that you would go, um, that you enjoy going to the most? I obviously love going to Ireland because I'm those guys are all my mates and the trainers really do good. And they're, they're good crack, and I like going over there. Yeah. I, I love the music over there. 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 I love the The training would like batter your body, but yeah. it would kind of make you feel alive at the same time. Like, yeah. so, such a tough, great environment. Which was really fun. I don't know if I could stay there forever. I think I just end up a broken wreck. Yeah. <laughs> but like for a week, it was it was great fun. Yeah, yeah. And do you have a a favorite training partner? Because obviously everybody's got somebody that they that, that's their favorite. I mean, uh, for me, I used to we we had a guy and uh, when I trained at GB, George McCoskey, and we called him the White Hulk. 
Um, this guy was an absolute machine. Um, and I mean, we came up together. We got our first stripes together. Or we got our blue belt together and things like that. And then, unfortunately, he had to to give up jujitsu because he got quite a. I think he had a bulging disc in his neck. Um, so, and they said if he if he was to do anything then he can potentially end up paralyzed so unfortunately oh, that's to, horrible yeah so he had to give up um and so he was like for me my favorite training partner when when obviously i was coming up us two we went to our first competitions we both won gold and silver at the first competition um and so on and so on so do you have a, a favorite person that you like to train with whenever you get the chance to train with them uh, I, I like i like training with everybody everybody's got different merits but like Kev back home's got like a special place in my heart. Like me and Kev would roll every day, and he was like he's much bigger than me, but he'd always be nice and make it a fun competitive round, but not yeah. use all his size. So uh, we used to have like absolute wars. I really loved it, and we we'd go like I said, we'd go to all the competitions together. Mm-hmm. We'd stay in a place. All the Scottish competitions, we'd stay in a place together. We'd drive home. If I couldn't get home from training, he'd drive me home. So like Kev's got a very special place in my heart. Like it helped me so much. Yeah, and it's a fun round as well. So those two things combined. Yeah. probably make him like in, in the history of my jiu-jitsu like my, my favourite training partner whenever I he gets to come down to Glasgow and he gets like coming for a morning roll and stuff and I'm always super excited and we can have like some wars like it's really yeah. fun definitely that's good eh? it's always nice to have someone like that when you're coming up through jiu-jitsu so um, and then Again, with you being obviously smaller, being a rooster weight, do you have, uh, have you rolled, well, I'm pretty sure you have, but have you rolled with guys who, even bigger guys that that maybe go a bit over the top with you in regards to aggression and things like that, they want to smash you, has that ever happened to you? Yeah, but usually the people that do that are kind of like beginners and then you can just beat them anyway, so, yeah. um, like, I've not really had too many bad experiences with, like, people that are good enough that they could actually really hurt me yeah, yeah um i know some people have some horrible experiences and i like seen some stuff in gyms people be like oh yeah holy shit that guy's gonna break somebody yeah but I, yeah. i've been pretty lucky um so yeah i kind of i kind of i kind of enjoy wrong with everybody um and if i see some massive beginner i'm probably gonna try try and avoid them for the, the <laughs> for the sake of my body but yeah. if I have to I'll roll them yeah because I would have thought I mean I know uh, the, the best I've done in jiu-jitsu I won the British and I remember coming back to the gym and uh, when you come back with the medal and um, then you would have a couple of people in the gym and again it was banter they would be like well if I beat you I'm going to be the British champion do you know what I mean so again did you have that for you obviously when you went out and you won the world nogi um, did, did you come back to the gym was there anybody like that with you a little bit, but never in any way that was like bad. Just, just like a bit of crack and that, you know. So yeah, yeah. Um, I don't get too bothered if I get beaten. Until I get tapped all the time, I'll get tapped by white belts. I'll get like a pass by people and stuff. So it's, yeah. In the gym, it's just about getting better. So I, so I don't really mind that stuff. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes it's all banter at the end of the day. So. Um... Oh, exactly. You wouldn't. You wouldn't want to be training in like some super sterile environment where no jokes are allowed you can get a bit of crack like i, I like to shit talk a bit like if, if me and kevin roll in we'll talk some shit you know so it's, yeah. it's fun it makes it like it makes it a little bit funner and up to stake so I, i'm more than happy for that stuff to go on yeah yeah and then you mentioned uh obviously flying out to um italy tomorrow um and again how's your preparation been going for that it's just been it's been going good i've, I've been feeling good been getting to train a lot i got to go down to Ellis' gym in um, Newcastle the other week as well, I got to spend a few days there mm-hmm. um, when I had some time off uni, so that was great, that was, that was really good competition prep, so, mm-hmm. so I'm excited for it, it should, it should be a good comp and then I can have some cheap, lovely pizza and a steer afterwards. <laughs> definitely, definitely. And then, uh, um, obviously from then, what's going to be your next thing after that, what are you going to be doing, what are we going to be seeing next? Um... I, I, I would I would like to do Nogi Worlds again, but it's right in the middle of, of my exams, so I, I don't see that as being like a, a, a pragmatic goal. But obviously, my exam schedule hasn't actually been released yet for the days, just like time they could be over. So if yeah. uh, by some miracle the days fit, I, I would like to go over and do that. But I'll definitely be doing Euros in January. Like yeah. I put a lot of effort into doing the Europeans in January. That'd be that's a big one. So yeah, definitely. That's like the next big one on the horizon. Yeah. Again, I know a lot of Scottish people are going out this year as well, uh, in January, so 
Um, well, obviously everybody will see each other. Um, I know oh yeah, the gra- so it's a celebration of jiu-jitsu. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's for, for European jiu-jitsu that one. It's a lovely place. Everybody's there. Uh, I don't see why. If as long as if you've got the money, I think everyone should go. Yeah. Basically, you're going to get to pressure test your jiu-jitsu. You're going to get to have a fun week with your friends in a lovely city. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's something that everybody should aim for, you know? Yeah. And it gives you a reason after Christmas to burn all the, the extra fat you've, <laughs> you've put on drinking the beers and eating your mum's home cooking and stuff, you know? So Yeah, definitely, definitely. So obviously we'll definitely see you out there. And then obviously you're at university. Obviously you mentioned it a couple of times. What, what is it you're doing at university? Uh, so I was doing history last year, but I changed uh, this year to be in Central and Eastern European history just because that's the area that interests me a little bit more. Um, yeah. uh, I'm really enjoying, you know, really, uh, the course is pretty free form and like you only have three compulsory hours a week. Obviously, you've got to do lots of reading, but mm-hmm. I can fit that around my training and yeah. I actually find the course pretty engaging. Like um, that part of the world's had such a tumultuous history and I, I'm particularly interested in like how an ideology and something that is essentially just a, a philosophy of the mind like communism was able to become real and tangible and completely alter the history of the world and particularly that region so mm-hmm. i really enjoy i really enjoy the core yeah so how long have you got there uh, what, what year are you in this will be your first year then yeah this is my second year second year and how many years have you got to do that another two after this right right so we've got you in glasgow for at least another two years and yeah, and then off to Brazil. <laughs> okay, okay. How long are you going to go out to Brazil for? I don't know, but uh, I, it's just like my pipe dream at the moment is finish uni, maybe work a summer and at least spend six months living in Brazil. Yeah. I, I, I want to learn Portuguese. I want to, I want to go over there and, train and yeah. sort of embed myself in the culture and really get to enjoy myself. I don't, I don't want to be like, trapped in one area of the world. I want, I want to be able to explore and get some new experiences and stuff. Mm-hmm. And Brazil seems like a place that's going to be different enough from here and get new experiences. Yeah. It's also going to have really good training. So I would like to go over there. Yeah, very hot as well. Something that we are not used to in Scotland. So um, we're very, very hot. So um, so we'll definitely be excited to see you doing that. And then for you, I mean, if you if you weren't doing jiu-jitsu, Shay, um, so obviously taking jiu-jitsu, MMA and things like that out the picture, what would we likely be seeing you doing? That's such a because it seems like this has been part of my life forever. Yeah. So so it's basically existed through my whole transition into like becoming a bird and an adult. Yeah. So I find it difficult to imagine my life without jujitsu. It's like my life is structured around when I can go to training and when I cannot go to training. Yeah. So the fact that I got into it in such a formative period of my life, mm-hmm. I feel like anything could have happened. Yeah. I, I could have could have been doing anything. Um. Yeah. I've got quite an obsessive personality, so I probably would have found something yeah. to obsess over. Hopefully, it would have been something healthy. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know. I'd probably. I took two years out from going to uni, so I imagine I would have gone to uni straight away. So I'd be finishing uni this year, mm-hmm. and I'd probably be getting ready to sort of enter the real world. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so getting a job, um, house, things like that. Yeah, the, all the adult stuff. But jujitsu has done absolutely brilliant for you. Um, I mean. As I say, you've managed to to do things and see places that, as I said, guys that have been doing it for years haven't had the chance to do that. Um, so, and again, obviously the future. Um, I'm sure whatever you do in the future, obviously in Italy um, at the weekend, obviously the Euros in January and possibly the Worlds next year as well. I'm sure whatever you do, you're going to be, you're going to make sure that you are going to be winning it um obviously that's your main thing and again anytime i've ever seen you at a comp um again you look very comfortable in regards to obviously your your, your technical ability your moves and things like that. everything looks very very comfortable for you you make jujitsu look easy um <laughs> if only it was if only it was, <laughs> no, only <yeah>. actually was. <laughs> but you you do you make it look easy and again a lot of people that i've spoke to the guys that wanted to have you on this was um they, they wanted to hear your journey and how how you managed to go from obviously being so young, becoming obviously the first person in Scotland. And again, that's history. I mean, you, you made history. Um, if people in three and four hundred years look back on it and say, who was the first jiu-jitsu champion in Scotland, adult champion, your name's going to come up. Um, so again, um, you, being a, you being a history person, that must be something that's exciting for you to think about. I, I don't know. I, I feel like 
Uh, I do the competition because I because I enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, win or lose, and like I, I, I would rather that like hopefully like some maybe some people go out and want to then compete outside of Scotland as well. But I'm um, not re- really doing it for like the claim or the history or anything. I'm sure I'll like when I'm like 90 and on my deathbed, like <laughs> looking at the medals being like, wow, I could actually move and invert once in my yeah, life while I'm yeah. like stuck in my chair watching Holmes under the hammer or something. Yeah. But, but other than that, like, um, nah, I just, it's when the competition's done, it's done. I'm just looking forward to the next thing that I can enjoy and stuff. I think putting too much into competition mm-hmm. can be quite a bad thing because there's, there's a period in my life where, when I'd left school and before I came to uni where literally all, all I did was a jitsu so I'd go to jitsu in the morning and then I would maybe train afternoon as well or, yeah. or then train again at night but like and then I'd just read books in between mm-hmm. um, but my happiness became so tied in and correlated to, to my performance in jitsu mm-hmm. I think it became almost to a degree unhealthy which yeah. is why I think like going to university really helped it out because now I can go and be comfortable in competitions I know win or lose I've got some other things go, going on in my life and other things that can bring me happiness. Whereas at that stage, like, that was the only thing that I had that was making me happy. I remember in, like, the final of Gi Euros, uh, I, I lost in the final. I came second to Gi Euros, like, uh, one of those years. And afterwards, like, I sat in the back and I cried for, like, four hours. And I was, like, yeah. devastated for weeks, which I don't think is healthy. And then that time I'm upset and angry, I'm also not getting better at Jiu-Jitsu, so... Mm-hmm. When I think of competitions now, I think of being able to enjoy this experience. I think of it as, as I, I aim for it to be a celebration of jiu-jitsu and getting to see my friends that are there, yeah. getting to test my jiu-jitsu against some good people, like win or lose, I hopefully have some good matches against some yeah. t- tough people. So, um, like, the competition really is, isn't the be-all be all an end-all for me anymore. And I think, in a way, that's brilliant because now I can go to competition and I can go and just like let it all loose and I seem to have done better since I, I made that change if you know what I mean yeah yeah. because like before I would be everything would be so weirdly strategic and like I would be fighting to win but like I'd also be so scared to make any mistakes that I would always turn out to be winning by like small margins and stuff yeah. by making things more difficult because of the pressure I was putting on myself and now there isn't that pressure mm-hmm. obviously I still get nervous obviously I still want to win but like it's now I can go out and just do my jiu-jitsu and I feel yeah. like that yeah. uh, makes things turn out a bit better. It is. I mean, it's different. I mean, people people put that pressure on themselves. Um, and do you know what I mean, I've been there. I've done it. When I went over to the World Masters, I remember getting beat over there. And, and I remember I did exactly the same as what you were talking about there when you um, obviously were in the back and you were crying. I did exactly the same. I remember being on the phone uh to my coach um cry well i was crying to him on the phone and then i remember speaking to my wife and saying do you know what i'm not doing this again do you know what I mean? and that was the first time that i'd actually lost in a competition um i remember winning anything i, I competed in in the uk i won and then i went over to the worlds with this what i felt was a big reputation people people in my gym and other people as well ah, you're going to do this and then I got over there and when I lost, I was absolutely devastated. Um, and it was that pressure that I put myself under. It wasn't anybody else putting pressure because people were saying, just go out and enjoy yourself and do this and do that. And um, yeah, I was absolutely devastated. So what you were saying there just kind of touched me as well because as I said, I know I know exactly how you would have been feeling at that point. Um but it's good now that you mentioned that you can go out and you can enjoy it now and you don't have yeah you still want to go out there and do your best and um but you don't put that amount of pressure on yourself so it's, it's definitely good to hear that and a bit and again especially somebody so young um to have that kind of mindset because as you know uh, other young guys out there will be putting themselves under the same pressure to do Oh, for sure you see so many people burn out so many people they're good at jiu-jitsu and they train so hard and they're talking about competition all the time they do some competitions and things don't go quite right and and they quit and it's a waste of such such talent and yeah. stuff yeah. yeah um i think at the end of the day like i try and think of it like if you go into competition win or lose you're still just as good at jiu-jitsu as you were before yeah yeah. Like, if you lose, that it doesn't make you worse in jiu-jitsu, that's just your jiu-jitsu couldn't be that person. Yeah, yeah. So, so, you can go to the gym, you can train hard and hopefully make your jiu-jitsu better, but you shouldn't be upset, because the level of your jiu-jitsu at is just a reality, and it's just 
got to deal with that and try and make it as good as you can. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then last thing for you, obviously, anything, anybody you want to thank, anybody that, um, is kind of, and again, you mentioned a few people already, but um, who is it you want to thank for where you are at the moment? Well, there's so many people. There's, there's people, all, all the gyms in, in my past, the, 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 in my present, you know, like every, everyone's helped me out. I, I've been lucky in this. There's too many people to find, but everybody has always, always gone out of their way to help me. Um, the guys back home, like, like Martin and Kev and that, like they, they put so much effort into helping me. Uh, and nowadays, like the guys in Ireland are, are always helping me so much. Like having a group of people that go to all these competitions it, it makes it financially possible for for you to do them because you'll have like a place where you can all stay together i can't drive so pe- people will be able to drive you around and stuff so, so having that connection yeah. is, is really really important i think so everybody in jiu-jitsu well almost everybody i've met has been like a really genuinely nice person mm-hmm. and they've always been when they see that you're passionate about it they've always been more than happy to, to help me out so i'd just like to thank all those people i suppose that helped me out along the way yeah yeah and these people will know exactly who they are so, oh yeah, everybody has played like a, a little small part. Well, no. Yeah. And yeah. I hope, I hope I I can help some people out too. Like you know, even if it's just like a smile while we roll or something. Yeah, yeah. Listen, you're definitely an inspiration for people. Um, I'd say not just the younger guys, but us older guys as well. I'd say we do, um, look at you and see the things you're doing and think, wow, um, if only we'd started it a little bit earlier. <laughs> so. Uh, I think the same. I see like. <laughs> 13 year old kids on Instagram just yeah. doing totally wacky amazing moves and I'm like only I started a little <laughs> bit earlier but no listen you're definitely an inspiration as I said you're going to go on and do great things I mean you've already oh, done you. great things so far but you're going to go on and uh, you're definitely going to be one of the greats to come out of Scotland so as I said I look at you you're the king of Jiu Jitsu in Scotland um, you're the man at the moment um, definitely one of the top purple belts not just in Scotland but the UK um, and probably far a field as well so um so it's definitely as i'm going to be excited to see more coming from you shay so um we're also i mean if you're in glasgow at the beginning of december uh we're having a uh every year we do an open mat so if you're about i'll, I'll try and make it for sure i got some training in with with shawnee the other day yeah which is really great i went through to come on again those guys are really lovely and nice too. I enjoyed that. They are nice, but yeah, first of December. I mean, if you're if you're about in Glasgow, as I said, uh, we're hopefully going to have uh, same as usual. When we have guys from all over Scotland and so on come in, so yeah, let's not be excited to see if you came along. Well, I'll try and make that for sure. I went to well, I went to one of your open mats a while back, and it was great. Um, yeah. Gym was a little bit cold, but the open mat was great. <laughs> yeah, it is a cool gym. He's now got new heaters in, so... Oh, uh, there we go. That's, you've just sold it to me. I'll be there. We'll, we'll have the heaters on maybe a couple of hours before people come in, so we'll make sure it's it's nice and warm for you guys this year. <laughs> so, uh, But listen, Shay, it's been an absolute pleasure. Oh, thank uh, you for having me on. I really appreciate it, isn't it? It was nice to speak to you. Yeah, you too. But listen, we'll definitely see you again. We'll, we'll hopefully see you in the near future. And yeah, if you're about pop along um, and hopefully we'll manage to get a couple of rolls together all right oh, sounds great right thank you Stuart. Cheers, buddy take it easy all right yeah bye bye so guys that was uh shay montague as i say she is um yeah i mean she's phenomenal um i see 20 year old and you look at some of the things she's done in such a short period of time um it's just been absolutely phenomenal. I mean, guys dream of um, doing some of the things that he's done and Shay's went out and done it. As I said, he mentioned there, he used to put a lot of pressure on himself, um, but now he's in, he's got to a point in jiu-jitsu where he's now enjoying everything, whether it be rolling in the gym or going to competitions, uh, winning, losing. As I said, it makes no difference to him. As I said, he's just out there enjoying his journey, which is a, it's a difficult thing to do. I mean, anybody that does jiu-jitsu, anybody that's listening, we know how much pressure we put on ourselves. We put on ourselves on a daily basis. Um, let's say we're in, we're in the gym and maybe we have a shit night. Um, we get tapped by everybody. Um, we maybe go for, it could be like that for a week where you get tapped by everybody and you start questioning yourself and putting that pressure on yourself. So, um, whereas as you, you heard Shay, I said, uh, he'll go out and he'll get tapped. It won't bother him. He'll just continue doing what he's doing, trying to get better, trying to improve different moves and so on so um it's great to hear and that's especially being so young 20 year old 
Um, he's going to be a f he, he's already phenomenal, um, but he's going to be even more phenomenal as the, the years go on. As he got himself um, in the right camps, obviously East Coast Jiu Jitsu. Obviously, we know the the caliber of people that train out of East Coast Jiu Jitsu. Um, obviously, the grip house as well. We know the caliber of guys in the grip house. Um, as he multiple. IBJJF champions coming out of that gym, obviously ex-professional MMA fighters, current professional MMA fighters, um, so obviously got himself um, and a good team there, and obviously Kevin McElwain and the guys up north, um, obviously still going back and training with these guys uh, during uh, holidays from university, and again very intelligent as well, I mean he mentioned obviously about his, uh, obviously the degree he's doing and things like that, and um, so obviously a very very high level of intelligence um, and again for being so young um, it's brilliant to hear um, see um, also he uh, obviously the pinnacle of his Jiu Jitsu so far um, winning the world no gi um, being the first person in Scotland um, to do it first adult in Scotland to win the, an adult world champion uh, IBJJF medal um, which again for me it's history um, anybody that looks in 100 years or 200 years they're going to read that and say first person to do that was Shea Montague um, obviously Shea was a bit uh, a bit more modest about it saying yeah yes and it's, uh, it's fine he doesn't really think about that but um, it's an absolute achievement for for what he's done so listen it's been an absolute pleasure talking to Shea hopefully you guys enjoy what you listen to um again obviously we've got um some other episodes coming up um hopefully we're going to get to speak to uh, a couple of guys or a couple of people should i say that are out in rome at the moment um so we've got quite a few people from scotland over there representing their gyms representing scotland and um, so hopefully we'll get a chance to catch up with a couple of them within the next few days but listen guys it's been an absolute pleasure um and we'll speak to you on the next one